tonight, a landmark town hall, the president and the people. You don't know what it's like to be me. What it's like to be me. To be me. To be me. You don't know what it's like to be Eric Garner's daughter and have to live with his death every day. Treat it with disrespect every time a white person look at you. My greatest fear is that he will lose his life protecting his community. Now, a national conversation about race, about policing. Automatically, when I think of police, I think power, I think fear. About how we bridge the divide. Put the guns down! After just one week in America, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I had to stop watching because it made me sick to my stomach. Stay with me. Outside Minneapolis, the live stream on Facebook. I told him not to reach for it. I told him to get his hand out. They send shockwaves through my soul. Policemen were just dropping. The targeting of police officers in Dallas. These are the heroes that I work with every day. What will it take for a nation to understand each other? to protect each other, to listen to each other. Every life in this country means something, every life. Tonight, family members, police officers, mothers and fathers, their children. It takes a leap of faith to get past divisions. Americans from all over this country and their questions for the president. For this conversation, we'll have to be there. To be honest. Respectful. To be uncomfortable. No question off limits. I would ask President Obama. Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President, can you help me keep our children alive? A national conversation begins now. Good evening, I'm David Muir, and we are here tonight for an honest and challenging conversation between the president and the people. So many of the families who have gathered right here in this room have been directly affected by what we've seen in this country in recent days. Loved ones lost during a police encounter, police officers who did not return home from work. We all witnessed what has transpired in just one week in America, Baton Rouge, Minneapolis, and Dallas. And sadly, we all know what came before, New York City, Ferguson, Baltimore, and the list goes on. This is a critical moment for this president and this country. We watched the president in Dallas telling Americans we are not as divided as we seem. We should note here that we asked the White House if President Obama would be willing to do this. They did not arrange this. He said yes. Nothing is off limits, a true and hopefully constructive conversation. So we welcome our viewers tonight in the U.S. and around the world across our Disney media networks, ABC, ESPN, Freeform, live streaming on Facebook, Yahoo and YouTube. And we're being carried worldwide tonight by our partners at the BBC. We welcome you all. And of course, we welcome the President of the United States, Barack Obama. Thank you, Mr. President, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. And, and before we begin this conversation here tonight, a bit of a guideline for everyone in the room. We're not going to retry any of the cases that we have seen in the news, but we are here to acknowledge that Americans in this country, depending on your race, your background, do see things, do hear things differently from one another. But tonight, we try to hear it and see it the same way. So we thought we would begin with where the news began a little more than a week ago, Mr. President, and that was with what we saw in Baton Rouge. We saw Alton Sterling tackled to the ground. He was then shot and killed. His son, Cameron, who is 15 years old, stood before the country, breaking down in front of the cameras. Take a look. My son is not the youngest. He is the oldest of his siblings. He is 15 years old. <laughs> He had to watch this as this was put all over the outlet. Cameron, I know it is difficult for you to hear that, but Cameron is with us here tonight. And if you would stand, I know in the last 24 hours you have made a plea to this country to come together. And I'm curious what you would like to say and to ask of the president. I've come here to ask one question. I ask that you keep all of these families and my family safe and the people and the rest of the the rest of the good police officers safe from bad people and bad police officers and i want and i ask for your help to unite all the races of this world well 
Uh, th l let me just first of all say, uh, obviously, how proud uh, we are of you, Cameron, to be able to be here and speak. Uh, I couldn't have done that when I was 15, uh, particularly in these circumstances. Uh, so I know your family's proud of you. Um, let me say to all the people who are here uh, who have been impacted in some fashion by not just tough events this week, but tough events in the past. Uh, I know we've got uh, families from Baton Rouge and Minnesota. We also have uh, the widows of police officers who are here uh, and know the incredible uh, risks that police officers take every single day uh, in terms of trying to protect us. Uh, I just came back from Dallas uh, a couple of days ago where I was hugging and spending time with spouses and children uh, of those who've been lost. And I, I think the, the thing you expressed, Cameron, is what I meant when I said the country's not as divided as it seems. In communities all across the country, there is real concern about making sure that interactions between uh, police and community uh, don't result in death. And nobody wishes that more than police officers themselves. Because when you talk to those police officers who uh, have, whether justified or not, whatever the findings, have ended up killing somebody, uh, it shatters them too. I don't know anybody in the African American community uh, or Latino community or others that may have concerns about policing that don't also recognize we need police and are heartbroken when they see what happens in a place like Dallas. And so the, the question is how do we channel what I believe are good spirits and good feelings and, and a sense of common humanity, how do we channel that into our institutions and how our police are uh, structured and trained and how the community is working with them so that these things don't happen with the kind of frequency that they do. And we don't want our children to have to witness this. I mean, the one thing that I'm, I'm certain of, because I've seen it in the White House, even with my younger staff, they've been shaken in ways that uh, makes me want to parent them a little bit uh, and, and tell them it's going to be OK. Uh, and I don't want a, a, a generation of young people to grow up thinking either that they have to mistrust the police or, alternatively, that, uh, that the police who are doing a good job and out there taking care of their communities, that. Uh, they're constantly at risk, not just from criminals, but also because the community mistrusts them. But uh, because of the history of this country and the legacy of race and uh, you know, all the, the, the complications that are involved in that, working through these issues so that things can continue to get better is going to take some time. Um, but I'm confident they will, and part of the reason I'm confident about that is because I'm meeting young people like you uh, who uh, honor your father well by making sure that uh, you're, you're speaking generously to police officers uh, as well as, you know, dealing with your own grief. So really proud of you. Thank you. Cameron, thank you. Very brave of you to come tonight.